95 years ago, the first Huitzo pioneers visited Eretz Yisrael. They discovered a magical land, a fascinating country, home to a diverse mix of people and cultures. 45 years before the establishment of the state, they believed that everything was possible, that the desert would bloom, and Jews from all over the world would come home. They dreamed, but the reality was harsh. Poverty and the hardships of daily life wore them down. The women worked at digging up the earth and paving roads. When Wietso began in 1920, the founders started to plan their contribution in building up the country. They started by developing an agricultural program, which they believed would be the beginning of change in Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> Jewish women from all over the world started to join the movement. As the country expanded and developed, so too did the demands on Witzo. The organization built a hostel in Tel Aviv, baby clinics, the first daycare center. These were difficult times. During the Arab riots, Witzo women were recruited to help the kibbutzim. Witzo women were extremely concerned with the situation in Germany, the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime. From that time, the Witzo women had one goal, to save European Jewry. Witzo brought over the old and the young, strong and ailing, established hostels and schools for them, and found them employment. During the Mandate period, the British administration in Palestine established a strict certificate system with the aim of preventing Jewish immigration to Eretz Israel. Witzo women organized protests and sent telegrams to London demanding that Jews be allowed to immigrate to their homeland. Witzo women were the first to enlist in the army and the civil guard. They set up meeting places for soldiers, trained medics, and hosted them in their homes. At the same time, they continued to fight for the right of Jews to immigrate to Palestine. In May 1948, when the State of Israel was declared, Rachel Kagan, chairman of Witzo Israel, was one of only two women who were given the honor of signing the Declaration of Independence. After many decades, the gates opened and the dream unfolded before our eyes. Witzo women were faced with new challenges. Witzo Haverot worked feverishly in Europe, Africa, even traveling to Yemen as professional nurses to assist with Operation Magic Carpet. Later, they helped in the transit camps. They taught Hebrew to new immigrants and cared for babies. As Israel developed, so did Witzo. Witzo established federations in over 50 countries. And when the population of Israel reached one million, the need for Witzo's services was even greater. Witzo shops and home industries opened, and Witzo even helped the army to train its cooks. They continued to believe in rural education and set up many agricultural youth villages. Hadassim, Nahalal, Ganvenov, Achuzat Yaladim, Nahalat Yehuda, institutions which educated tens of thousands of children. Through all the years of its existence, the State of Israel has endured many wars. Witza women have always been on the front line. During more peaceful times, Witza was able to handle other problems. The Haverot began to assist the disadvantaged and to close the social gap. Witzo has always strived to help this sector of the population. Witzo has expanded over the years, opening many new branches throughout Israel. Hundreds of thousands of Jewish women all over the world have supported Witzo every step of the way. Throughout the decades, they have devoted themselves to the welfare of the State of Israel and the Jewish people.